the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy and peace. Joy and peace. Today we commemorate the prophet Elijah, or Elias, or Elia. And one thing from his life that is very beautiful, and it mentions it in the Synoxarium, is you remember how Elijah, we have this icon here, of him being taken up into heaven, making this ascent. And it's interesting, if you listen closely to the hymnody today, the church is careful to say he was taken up as if into heaven. There's a recognition there that until the general resurrection, that, and until the resurrection of Christ, that, that something still has to occur before he's actually, so he's as if into heaven. But then the Synaxarian says, where is that? We don't know. So he's taken up. And then, of course, as he's going up, his mantle, and it's depicted in the icon here, is let go and falls on Elisha. And so he receives this double portion of the grace of Elisha. And in terms of typology, it's important to remember and to see in this event so typology has to do with how the scriptures, there's things that happen that are types that find their fulfillment in Christ and in who he is and what he does. And so the type that's being fulfilled here is, is the rising up into heaven and then the descent of the portion of grace on Elisha. And what the Synoxarian speaks of is that this is a type a prefiguring, a foreshadowing of the Lord's ascent into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father and of the descent of the Holy Spirit that comes down on all of the apostles. And, and so you see throughout the biblical text and throughout the lives of the saints that are depicted there, these forms and shapes, these events and patterns of events that occur that are constantly giving us a type and pointing us to Christ and to who he is and reminding of us, of us of him. And interestingly, another thing the hymn that he mentions this morning, and, and it's also mentioned in the Synoxarium, is that Elijah, Elia, being a man and having, he has in many moments of his life, far less mercy than God does, and wants there to be much more punishment brought on the people. And so the hymn that he speaks of how God was constantly restraining him and trying to teach him to be more merciful. And you can see the same thing in the book of Jonah with the prophet Jonah, that Jonah doesn't want God to be merciful. He actually wants the city to be destroyed. He wants the people to be punished. And God has to show him um, the path of mercy. And so I think there's another type there in the same way that uh, another type that foreshadows just who God is. That he's calling people to be more merciful even though their, their inclination is, is to cry out for judgment. And so in all these ways, we look at the, the life of the prophet Elijah, and we see that inspiration that's there. And also, we are reminded that, as one of the Desert Fathers says, that if you wish, you can become all flame. And this is what we see in the life of the prophet Elijah, that eventually he's taken up to heaven in this fiery chariot really becomes all flame. And, and even as he parts it, and, and is able further on, much later, although what does later mean, wherever he is, it's hard to understand what later means. But later, he's standing at the transfiguration, and with Moses, beholds the incarnate Son of God, and is able to see and participate in this uncreated light. And so may we dwell in the light and be inflamed in spirit 
and read the scriptures always with a view to looking for Christ our God and his wonders and great mercy and love for me.